Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is oppositional defiant disorder? Now, this is a mental health disorder that gets a lot of attention, and it's a bit controversial. Part of the reason it's controversial has to do with the subjectivity of the criteria. So, this disorder is characterized by an angry, irritable mood or argumentative, defiant behavior. And actually, there's two groups. There's symptom criteria for angry, irritable, and argumentative, defiant, as well as one symptom criterion under a category called vindictive. Four symptoms have to appear, and they can be anywhere from these three categories. The symptoms have to appear for at least six months, and the interactions where the symptoms are observed have to include people that are not siblings. So these symptoms do not apply to sibling interaction. So in the first category, we have angry, irritable mood. Now you'll notice here, as I'm going through the symptom criteria, that the word often is used in seven of the eight symptom criteria. So for the first one, for angry, irritable mood, often loses temper. Then we have often is touchy or easily annoyed and is often angry or resentful. Those are the three symptom criteria for angry, irritable mood. Then looking at argumentative defiant behavior, we have often argues with authority figures, often defies authority figures, often deliberately annoys others. Notice the use of the word deliberately there, so just annoying others would not qualify. It has to be deliberately annoying others. And then often blames others for mistakes or behavior. The last category, the vindictive category, this one is a little easier to quantify. It doesn't involve the word often. There needs to be two or more instances of spiteful or vindictive behavior in the last six months. Now, when talking about this six-month rule for oppositional defiant disorder, it's important to keep in mind that for this disorder, there's a distinction made at age five. So if an individual is under age five, the symptoms must appear most days in those six months. Over five, at least once a week for six months. When looking at the severity specifiers for oppositional defiant disorder, there are three, mild, moderate, and severe. And they're entirely based on the number of settings where these symptoms are present. So for example, home, school, with peers, at work. One setting is mild, two settings is moderate, and three settings or more is severe. So it's a bit of an unusual way to look at the severity specifier when we compare it to how the severity specifier is used with a number of other disorders in the DSM. One question I get sometimes pertaining to oppositional defiant disorder is what is its relationship to conduct disorder? Now, generally, we think of conduct disorder as a more severe disturbance than oppositional defiant disorder. Technically, an individual can be diagnosed with both at the same time, although I wouldn't think that would be the expectation. Conduct disorder has certain features that we don't see in oppositional defiant disorder, like aggression, destruction of property, and a pattern of theft or deceit. Also, oppositional defiant disorder has an emotional dysregulation component that we would not see typically in conduct disorder. So the two can be differentiated, and as I mentioned, technically someone can have both. They could be comorbid. But usually we think of somebody as having either oppositional defiant disorder, or if the symptoms are more severe, they may qualify for a diagnosis of conduct disorder. So what causes oppositional defiant disorder? Well, there's a bit of controversy around this too. There is one school of thought that says that oppositional defiant disorder is really pathologizing normal behavior. That's one school of thought. Another school of thought is that there's a genetic component, although this is really unclear. We don't really know how genetics play a part in the development of this disorder. There is also possibly a temperamental component to the development of oppositional defiant disorder, an etiological component. And this involves emotional reactivity and poor frustration tolerance. 
So an individual that exhibits one or both of those would be at a higher risk for oppositional defiant disorder. In terms of parenting, and this is the, probably the more controversial area in terms of the etiology of oppositional defiant disorder, there have been studies that show that harsh, inconsistent, and neglectful parenting does seem to be etiological to oppositional defiant disorder. Certainly, we know they are risk factors, and we believe they also may be causal. They may be etiological. Now, again, with mental health disorders, including oppositional defiant disorder, there are a lot of potential risk factors and causes that we don't know about. We can't fully explain how these disorders develop. The best evidence right now suggests that the genetic component could be there, temperament could be a part of it, and the behavior of parents could be a part of it. I hope you found this description of oppositional defiant disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.